Welcome back. In this fourth module, we will focus on lawmaking and health emergency preparedness. New legislation could not address all the essential areas, which, although they may differ from one country to another, may include overall health system governance, risk management, data collection and use for all purposes, including surveillance, contract tracing, epidemiology, research, health planning, and national focal point communication with WHO, quarantine arrangements and travel measures, biosafety and biosecurity, coordination across all sectors and government levels, depending on the health risk or in the event of a multi-hazard emergency, a multi-sectoral mechanism and clear lines of authority, protection for human rights, measures and approaches to ensure gender responsive legislation and avoid or address unintended consequences for vulnerable groups, measures to achieve maximum possible community engagement, identifying and removing impediments to an emergency response, ensuring that the health system's priorities along with broader consideration of universal health coverage and the sustainable development goals are not overlooked, recognising the importance of careful costing and of an implementation and communication strategy. Opportunities to consider how legislation may contribute to health emergency preparedness or to question whether a piece of national legislation generally serves its purpose may arise at different stages, including those at which legislative priorities are set, legislation is scrutinised in parliamentary committees, plenary debates on draft legislation are held, and parliamentary votes on approving legislation are conducted. Law reform in itself is unhelpful unless it is properly supported by the successful and sustainable implementation, including the necessary budget. Parliamentary involvement in the lawmaking process can differ depending on the legislation development process in each country. How might parliamentarians better equip themselves to undertake their important function of lawmaking in relation to health emergency preparedness? Is it possible to check current legal preparedness? Any consideration of legal reform should begin by considering what legislation already exists and the extent to which it already supports the aim of the desired reform. Knowing what legislation already exists is also essential to ensuring any proposed reform is consistent with or complements existing laws. The best approach is to run a full audit of all legislation, both inside and outside the health sector, that affects health system structure and function. A full audit of relevant legislation requires some time and technical skill, but is of enormous benefit for maintaining and improving the health system generally. It is also a crucial aspect of examining legal preparedness for health emergencies. If law reform is to be considered, this is a necessary first step. It is also enormously helpful to contact people currently working with the legislation or affected by it and ask them about its usefulness. Preparing a country to respond to health risks and health emergencies necessitates planning and consideration of many potential system interventions and mechanisms. Preparedness implies the capability to identify risks and manage them before they escalate and to be able to mount a response across all sectors and government levels for one hazard or for several. Legislation is always part of preparedness irrespective of whether it supports preparedness or response to efforts. This is because the work to bring about legal reform can be quite long depending on the complexity of the proposed reform. 
These questions are specific to health emergency preparedness, and using them may help parliamentarians to find out how the legislative proposal affect health emergency preparedness. How does the law affect health emergency preparedness? How does the law support health emergency preparedness? How does the law help to achieve the core capacities and obligations under the IHR? How does the law work with other existing powers and measures for public health protection, surveillance and health emergency preparedness? What effect would the law have in a multi-hazard emergency? In other words, is it clear how a coordinated approach to multi-hazard event can be taken when several regulatory frameworks are involved? For example, a change in the chief veterinarian's powers under agricultural legislation may affect how that office works with the chief health officer under public health legislation when there is a multi-hazard emergency arising from a virus in animals which may be transferred to humans. Does the law impede preparedness in any way? Does the law reduce available funding or resources? Does the law establish a new regulatory framework that does not work with existing frameworks in multi-hazard emergencies? Does the law hinder emergency response measures? For example, does it introduce new obligations to prevent the sharing of health data, making it impossible to immediately communicate health risks to WHO, as required under the IHR? Does the law reduce clarity surrounding the leadership or authority to manage emergencies? Does the law provide a new power, right, responsibility or obligation? How will any new obligations be enforced? Is any training required for officers with new responsibilities? How is implementation planned, including notifying all people affected, any necessary training or any necessary resources, etc.? Are any standard operating procedures, SOPs, or protocols needed to ensure the reform can be part of a multi-sectoral, multi-hazard response. Some options for parliamentary action are Join a parliamentary committee with responsible for the health sector, health system or emergency preparedness. If there is no such committee, advocate for it to be created within existing parliamentary rules for establishing such committees. Ask the department in charge to brief you on the legislative proposal. At the briefing, ask relevant questions, which may be drawn from those suggested above or from your own interest, expertise or local knowledge. Ensure the proposed legislation complies with human rights and gender requirements. Ensure that the members of any parliamentary committee represent various parties and sectors and that the committee has the power to co-opt members if... In the event of a health emergency, additional expertise may be needed. Ask questions in Parliament about proposed legislation. In Cabinet and other high-level meetings that determine legislative priorities for a parliamentary session, advocate for legislation that will increase health emergency preparedness and meet core capacities under the IHR. Ask questions about the appropriate time in Parliament, such as question time, about health emergency preparedness and compliance with the country's commitments under international law to implement the IHR. Seek out and use familiarisation programmes, conferences, webinars and other opportunities offered from time to time to parliamentarians to build their knowledge about health emergency preparedness, the IHR or other related areas. Use these questions to assist parliamentarians and their staff in crafting questions for parliaments and parliamentary committees concerning the existing regulatory framework and its ability to support health emergency preparedness and the implementation of IHR. 
A checklist can be a quick approach to assessing legal preparedness for health emergencies and identifying any gaps. The checklist indicates the level of health emergency preparedness in the country and can help to inform decisions about whether more attention to legal preparedness, including legislative review and legal reform, may be required. It can also help parliamentarians to frame questions for Parliament or for committees, as well as to pinpoint areas where further briefing or oversight is needed. In using the checklist, there is no need to answer every question in detail. The questions may serve as prompts to examine legislation and to see what is currently in place to support implementation of the IHR. Most observers and system participants can benefit from a checklist to identify the extent to which countries' legislative architecture is fit for purpose in terms of managing health risks and health emergencies. Please visit the World Health Organization and Interparliamentary Union 2002, Strengthening Health Security Preparedness, the International Health Regulations 2005, Interparliamentary Union Handbook, from the resources page to refer to the table from Annex 1. Please refer to Annex 1 of the WHO IPU Handbook for Parliamentarians for a sample checklist that can be used as a preliminary tool for parliamentarians and their staff. How might a checklist of legal preparedness for health emergencies be used by parliamentarians? Parliamentarians may use the checklist to develop their own preliminary view of the country's status and quickly identify potential gaps. They may also use it as the basis for a request to a committee secretariat or a Ministry of Health for a briefing on legal preparedness. Lastly, using a checklist may help parliamentarians prepare for committee discussions of proposed law reforms. Let's recap what we have learnt. Preparing a country to respond to health risks and health emergencies necessitates planning and consideration of many potential system interventions and mechanisms. Legislation is always part of preparedness, irrespective of whether it supports preparedness or response efforts. Any consideration of legal reforms should begin by considering what legislation already exists and the extent to which they already support the aim of the desired reform. A checklist can be a quick approach to assessing legal preparedness for health emergencies and identifying any gaps. Here is a question that you can ponder over. Why is legislation always part of preparedness irrespective of whether it supports preparedness or response efforts.